have some questions on reconciling the inner and outer worlds. So I'd like to ask, is the inner world more or less real than the outer? The inner world is the real world. Anything you see on the outside of your body, it's because you can perceive it as such. <clears throat> Where you perceive it from, it's not the outer world, you perceive it from the inner world. Inner that creates the outer. Always inner first. So everything you perceive is a projection. That has to be understood. Perception is a projection. We are projecting everything back to itself. So that includes people and things that show up in the time field. Projections. Where we are in relationship to other, self to other. Not so much inner, outer, and self to other thing, object. No object without a subject. No subject, no object. No mind, nothing happens. No mind, no existence. So I say no heart, no existence. Lights out. So the inner world is the real world. Because from the inner world you create the outer world, actually. So it should be from the inside out, therefore you need to work on the inside. Working from the inside means um, spiritual practice, inner practice, mental practice, emotional practice. So we need to recreate that inner world to the degree that the inner world, in terms of what comes back from your perceptions and your experience, is either undesirable or painful, and we can adjust it from the inner world, change your attitude, your view. And then what is called inner becomes more creative, becomes source. And source, then you can create a better outer world for yourself because it's a projection, it's an extension, same world. So above as below, so outside as it is inside. And once we're clear, once we enter the clear dimension of consciousness, and the pure dimension, then there's no inner outer because the inner is so, so pure that the, the outer disappears as something other than what it is. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. In other words, then I am you, I'm the camera, I'm the chair and the lights, right? Uh, uh, I'm the room, the space, all together it's one. Uh, I only appear to be talking. I'm not here. Uh, neither are you. So, would you say that the um, inner world is superior for this reason to the outer the, world? The inner world is more primordial, not superior. It's more primordial, see, it's primal, it's first. The inner world is, is you, You're not you as itself, thought, mind, and world machine. The inner world is the awareness. The awareness is the inner reality of everything. No awareness. Zero. Less than zero. It's a negative zero. So saying not here means not in form, but as presence. Presence is here. It's living presence, pure awareness is here. So, so we're not here in terms of limitations, forms and appearances. We're here in terms of reality. Because what it is, is what enables us to be as we appear to be. And that's something we need to reconcile. See, what dimension, what source point uses your consciousness, your body mind, and whatever it is that you, you seem to be or appear to be, to have any perception whatsoever? In other words, your, your appearance is an effect of something. It has a source. It's like you came out of a womb. You had a source. So what are you an appearance of? And that's a good question. What is anybody an appearance of? So the intelligence then, as awareness itself, creates the inner and outer, and all that's in between and all that's beyond inner and outer, self and other, material and spiritual, dichotomies, ad infinitum, they erase, boom, it's not gone, it's just awareness, awareness rules, neither within, neither without, neither with beginning or ending. Neither born nor neither dying. Nothing. 
just is what it is. That's the supreme, superior, is the is as it is, as only the is can be, which is true nature, then, or no nature. Pick, pick your phrase. New nature, no nature, true nature, this nature, whose nature? Why nature? The how nature? <laughs> the wild nature. So, so then what is the nature of the confusion that leads most beings? Ignorance is the nature of all confusion. Ignorance. Ignorance then means being partial to the reality. Only looking at some of it. Once we are in a position where the, the awareness-ness or awareness-isness itself is all there is. Everything is included in that. No. There's not a single thing that is not included in it. Because it's the all. The all is like complete openness. Okay. That's the true nature of awareness. See, it's infiniteness. People don't see that because they're ignoring. Yeah. Yeah. So the ignorance as an attitude or a mechanism is that which refuses to see the total for what it is. The allness of itself, the all knowing nothing, yeah. which includes everything yeah. imaginable, known, unknown, unknowable, all of it. Yeah. Because it is what it is yeah. reality. Or we can call it then self nature. It is of itself, there is no self. So we call it self nature. Because it's selfless. So, selflessness is self-nature. Self-nature is pure selflessness. Yeah. No playing with the words. Yeah. Self-nature. It's, it's alone. It alone. Simply. Utterly. All one. Yeah. Transcendent. As it is. Indescribable. Incomprehensible. So you leave it alone. Can't, can't deal with it. So you rest in peace then. You're forced into peaceful realization. Because you're exhausted trying to figure out what it is or understand what it is. It's not, it's not your mind. It's the source of the mind. Light, awareness. Very simple. Beyond in and out of. Beyond knowing and not knowing. Beyond nature and non-nature. So when you talk about the infiniteness and the incomprehensible, how do, how do beings reconcile that with, is that, is that too overwhelming a view for most beings? It depends on how open or closed the individual assumes themselves or knows themselves to be. In this case, knowledge then is ignorance. Knowing self is limitation is ignorance. Because you're ignoring the total. You're already closed off. Closed-mindedness is small-mindedness. It's a refusal to see. It's not accepting reality for what it is. It's a total picture. Yeah. Yeah. Program of limitation. You know, minus programs of limitation, it is what it is. And the person's happy because they're, they're completely naked and exposed to what is light. They are the light. What's there to hide from if you are the light itself? You're the source of illumination. So when you enter the recognition, understanding that originally you are no more or less than light, and light rules, then there's no ignorance. It's just radiance. They're human for ignorance to radiance. The idea is to be the radiance of your own true reality. Pure awareness, beingness beyond beingness, awareness beyond awareness. Yeah. So, if we create our own limitations, how do we remove those that, in order to see the infinite? No one's creating it. It's already it's already here. 
just a matter of waking up into what it is. Being open to it is waking up. So, all right, stop. Stop doing anything about it. Stop trying to figure it out. What you're left with when everything stops in terms of thinking, feeling, sensing, uh, knowing, all of these things, being, what's, all of that is put to rest. What you have left is what it is. <laughs> that might be overwhelming to some people. Yes. Huh? Well, there's nothing. It's nothing. It would seem that the more, uh, at least typical way, is to try to work the inward from the outward. Mm -hmm. Try, if, if I had this in the outer world, well, I would be yeah. happy in my Remember, inner Remember, there's no, if I had this to begin with. There's no I that has anything to do with this. You have to let go of that, like right now. In other words, the viewpoint doesn't count when we're speaking about the whole picture. There's no room for that. There's no need for it. When time comes to breathe, you want to move your lungs, that's it. A tree is a tree. Breathing is breathing. And understanding that is key to the universe completely. How can you breathe? What's the mechanism? What's the system? What's the process? It's inconceivable. All you know is you can breathe. And you're, you're glad to be able to breathe because that's the nature of life, it's breath. And if you tend to just breathing, you start to see how we see this, to actually relax into the total for what it is. Then we go back to what the real nature of this is, is peace. Unconditional peace without qualifications of self, I and me. And, uh, these conventional terms dealing with things and their relationships to one another, it's meaningless. Yeah. Is unconditional peace so rare as to be only a theory for most people? Well, it's the true nature of everything. Again, once all the BS stops, once all the machinery runs down, it's what you have left. When there's no you, there's no it. There's no other. In other words, there's no, no conventional validation necessary for this. You're going back to your origin of, let's say, pure being. Simply being. You can't do anything about it. It's already what it is. Any effort to do anything about it is maybe avoiding what it is. We have to see that. Because it is what it is. Nothing you can do about it, but it is nothing you can do about it. You are nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Everyone is nothing they can do about it. It means it's inaccessible, because it is what it is, it's the real. And it's absolutely that. Perfect. So even a thought violates it, so to speak. Even an impression, a memory, violates it, so to speak. I mean, it, it shows up as a pollution, a perversion of what it is, which is perfection already. So human nature is irrelevant to it, although, paradoxically, without it, there'd be no human nature. So human nature is a paradox unto itself. But what it is, is beyond paradox, because it rests in itself, as itself, for itself. And yet we have, at the same time, an, an ego that believes itself to be real. Oh, there's a belief system, so you don't have that either. You, you don't have it. <laughs> you never had it. Where is it? You can't find it. <laughs> it can't be found. 
doesn't exist. It's a presumption, it's a mechanism, it's a mock-up. So it's make-believe. I am what? What's that got to do with you sitting there? Nothing. <laughs> it's blah blah. <clears throat> Isn't the perception of an outer world necessary in order to function in the outer world, which is the physical world? Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. That's as if to say, <clears throat> you can't go to the bathroom without having a need to go to the bathroom. Your need brings you there. There's nothing you can do about it, whether it's over there or in your pants. So then it has more to do with function, not your perception of what is this and what is that relative to conventional this, that, and whatever. Because these things have their own, their own command center. Yeah. In other words, from a karmic level, you've got to do what you've got to do. That's all you can do. When you're free of that, then you may have other options. But in the meantime, when you're in the control function of karmic, let's say, experience, it does, yeah. or the blood does, instincts do, not you, instincts. You might want to not ever have to drink or eat, but your instincts will allow you to do that. Okay? Your body is a system that belongs to the universe, and it operates on its own. You're not really running the show, it's running the show. It's allowing you to imagine, believe, assume, presume, you're running the show. It's like the heart. The heart beats, and when it stops, you're gone. We can say that the heart runs the show, so to speak. Rhythm runs the show. Heartbeat runs the show. Time runs the show, man. So we have to acknowledge our insignificance in our beingness but also the preciousness of the human condition, primarily, as a means to understand all of this to begin with, and be at peace with it. That's the whole thing, not to understand it intellectually, but to finally, completely, be at peace with it. Say, ah, nothing to think about. Let it do what it has to do. So realization is a letting it do what it has to do. Do what it has to do. Learning to do, do. But you have no choice but to allow to do. Eventually you'll be so tired this evening, you're going to pass out. You can't do anything about it. You can wish yourself into staying awake forever, but it's not going to happen. The body rules. See? See, so it's a paradox. You have it, you have no control. You need to learn what it is you need to cooperate with, and yield to it accordingly. And then go beyond that and say, Spirit, do what you need to do. I am in your service. Because you have no choice but to do that either. It's already done. Already done. Come in. So, as realization occurs, what happens to the ego? <clears throat> There's never been an ego anyway. So there's nothing to happen to them that doesn't exist. <laughs> what can happen to anything that doesn't exist? Who cares? <laughs> okay. So the assumption, though, that yourself is a real self, is, is a, is a mock-up. It's a game. Okay. Necessary, because you, you need to show up with some sense of I guess, identification, but identification is programmed. The best identification is no identification, so nobody knows who they are. You can know where you are, but you can't really know who you are, because that's, that's being defined by where you, wherever you are. And what it is that wherever you are demands of you to show up as. So once again, who controls? What controls? A good question. What's the inner? What's outer? Good question. For realized being, these things don't exist. And yet everything goes on. Grass grows, sun shines, raindrops fall, snowflakes fall. Yeah. 
wind blows, the oceans wave, the earth rocks and rolls, trembles, the heart beats, and the voice sings, and the body dances, and the fingers play. And life is what it is beyond itself, as pure nature. So, is that a passive process then, where we just let things happen? It's neither passive nor active. Eh? Because it's not what anyone thinks. Because it doesn't matter if you, what you think. Eh? So thinking should be coincidental with the whole process, so that at least relative to the reality of what's going on, <clears throat> you can think in certain terms that, that makes sense. Ultimately, there's no sense to be made. Only the self seeks sense, common sense. Only the self seeks meaning. The heart is beyond this. The master is beyond this. The master says that nothing happens. Nothing has ever happened. There's no beginning or end and no existence already. It's pure peace, the greed. The light of understanding, beyond understanding, is pure, crazy wisdom, is real. So, is it the self or instinct that, let's say, manages or oversees our survival? Neither. Instincts play their role. Programs have their role. Keep you grounded in gravitational experience. Payment, river of blood payment, karmic debt. That's going to run its course until you awaken beyond it. Then what's next? When you awaken, all bets are off. Nothing goes. The ego goes. Self goes. Ignorance goes. Delusion goes. The heart rules. The heart is what it is. The heart is the universe. The universe is huge. It's huge. The universe is Lord, and we are that. So our resonance with what that is as Lord, as the universe, as a cosmic being, perfect as it is, that makes the difference in terms of how it uses you and allows you to feel you're using it. It is what it is. And everyone is here for the ride. You're on the ship of Earth for a ride. Nothing you can do about it. No deal you can make to, to change it. Because it is what it is. It's law. It's gospel. It's the way it's, it's true. You, you can open to understanding it and embrace it for what it is. And that's the way of uh, meditation. The way of spiritual practice. You let go of the material enough to have the beauty and the exquisite subtlety of the spiritual. The mystery. So you know you don't know. You don't know that you know. So if the heart rules, are we here merely to be subjects of the heart? Or servants of the heart? If the heart rules, the heart rules. The tree's a tree. It's not about being a servant, particularly, or a slave, or a master. It's not about these things. It's about no thing. When you enter the no thing, then let's say, it is what it is. When you enter the is what it is, then you're in proper relationship to what it is, and then it does what it needs to do, allowing you to think you're doing what you need to do. That suggests that we never do anything. Exactly. When have you ever done anything? <laughs> it's happening. So therefore nothing happens. Everything is happening. And you, you can take credit for it or not. Doesn't matter. Come in. So what, what is left to do? <laughs> exactly, nothing. <laughs> it's intolerable see, to the unenlightened mind that there's nothing to do. And that's the starting point. 
give up trying to do anything. Okay? Think of the wind. What's the wind doing? Is it doing anything? Being wind. Mm -hmm. Think of the sun. What's the sun doing? What's it doing? From itself, it's doing nothing. Because it's, it's a, it, it is what it is. Is the planet doing anything? No, the planet's not doing anything. It appears to be doing something. The planet's just being here. It's being done. The planet is being done by the universe. The sun is being done by the universe. Everything is being done by the total. Everything is the effect of the total. That's mysterious. It's incomprehensible. But it's also very simple and very beautiful. Because when you open to it, you enter peace. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change anything really. You can't recreate anything from that. Because you're, you're, you are what it is. So, is it safe to say that our beliefs are limitations? Our beliefs are beliefs. And they are no things. So they don't count at all. Your beliefs are useless. But for a person that has nothing better than a belief to cling to and identify itself as, then it's everything. It's all the person has. And that's called ignorance. You and your beliefs. That means you and your things you don't know for sure. You don't know beyond any doubt. You don't know beyond knowing. Because you're not being. Beyond being. Which is impossible because you are the being beyond being. You have to come to terms with what that means in your case. Denying it or resisting it, then it's your problem. If there is a problem, it's your confusion, that's ignorance. Ignoring your basis for existing as a apparent individual dependent upon the whole. Without the whole, you have no existence. You have the planet. The planet is your prop right now. The planet's your prop because the solar system is a prop for the planet. The solar system is a prop for the planet because the galaxy is a prop for the solar system. The galaxy is a prop for the solar system, which is a prop for the planet, which is a prop for you because the universe is its prop. And so we have to understand the props of the props of the props of the props of the props brings bring us back to this proposition. What are you? Who? Yeah. Who are you? If not the total universe. And once you start to feel and absorb that as some kind of intuitive realization, you start to flatten out. Yeah. You realize you don't even need to question or think or do anything because it's going to be done. And being open to what it is, at a certain level, gets everything done perfectly. And you, my friend, your self-mind, may get in the way of it. Momentarily until you yield. And say, well, there's nothing here. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to do anything. I'm afraid to do nothing. <laughs> I'm afraid. Good. You're stuck in fear. Until you realize what that is. As a reaction to it. What it, it seems to be larger and unknowable, mysterious or profound, yeah. which is what it is, which is also who and what we really are. So where's the confusion? We are already what it is. It should be peace. It's already done. There's nothing to do, nowhere to go, nothing to be, no one to be. Because it is reality. Perfect. Complete. Excellent. So then, for example, does the belief that the heart rules obstruct the realization that the heart rules? The belief, the presumption, the perception, the thought, the mind, the self, 
The human, all of it, is obstruction. All of it is unnecessary. And all of it doesn't exist beyond the point. What exists then, because of what is left, minus all of the comma, all the chromatic programming and machinery of self-thought of mind in the world, what's left is silence. What do you do with silence? What can you add to, what can you take from silence? We are in the ocean of silence, absolutely. We're not living as it is. We're living as humans, unwilling to comprehend and open to what it is. In truth and in spirit. The great gift, the great presence, the Divine One is here. And who sees that for what it is? Who feels it for themselves? Okay. Who loves that for what it is? Who is that for what it is? How can it be any other way? Except as some kind of fantastic delusion. But if there was a God, would the God be so removed from itself, which this universe is part of its assumed creation, to be without itself? It doesn't make any sense. It is itself. This whole thing is itself. Then, then we're giving it back to the truth of what it is. It's a paradox of itself. And that's a realization. The divine is the divine. And as the divine, it's no divine. But that's what the divine would tolerate being. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. That's the mystery of the divine. <clears throat> it's the divine beyond the divine. And so be it. And everyone is part of it, so we can't pretend we can't know it. It doesn't work. Because you're just recoiling back on your own programs of refusing to see it and know it and feel it and be it for what it is. So then, is so-called human civilization and technological achievements and creation in the physical plane at odds with the realization? No, it's just child's play. It's not at odds with anything. It is its own limitation. It's nothing to do with the divine. The divine doesn't care about that. The divine is, is not limited to that. The do divine is the dark and the light and neither. The divine is form and formlessness, and neither. And, and there's no confusion, no contradiction here. It is the is, and it is the is not at the same time. And it is also neither the is nor, and, nor the is not. That's the beauty of it. It's total. It's total. It's exhausting. Complete exhaustion. And thus, we can say, it is complete cessation of effort, complete effortlessness. It's just 